Joshua, Lizzie, congratulations. Fatal Attraction, I mean, the OG romantic thriller. <laughs> what is the most interesting or fun way that this was updated from your perspective if you were fans of the original? I'm a huge fan of the original. Mm -hmm. Josh was always saying how much he dislikes yeah. the original, he which I found that... disrespectful. Wow. First question of the day yeah. under the bus like yeah. already. Mm -hmm. It's it's like, I don't know why people sentiment. like it. <laughs> um, while I think the film actually does hold up so well, considering it was 1987, yeah. I do think, and we talked a lot about how, of course there's room for a deeper dive on Alex and her mental health and where she's coming from and maybe trying to figure out why she does some of the things she does. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of room for the Dan character to maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know, suffer consequences mm -hmm. for yeah. his actions. Honestly, I didn't right? actually like that part. I thought that <laughs> yeah, was Yeah, he over fought, the top. again, yeah. really hard against yeah. that. I'd like to opt out of that. I thought yeah. the original yeah. really <laughs> nailed the like, you do a thing and then it's kind of everybody yeah. else's fault. Boys will be boys. <laughs> right? <laughs> As the good they old do. Days, yeah. the good old days <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, and that's what I wanted to ask you is, you know, in the original, Alex sort of walked away in the court of public opinion as the villain, even if that wasn't necessarily the intention. And to your answer, I assume that's sort of what we take more care with? She's still the villain. Okay. Like, there's no two ways about that. Okay. She does some She's pretty bad. horrible things. She's that evil. said, okay. I do think that in the film it was she was the only one that did anything mm, bad. And right. he mm -hmm. really, even though he's the one who stepped out on his wife yeah. and family, like we didn't have time for that as audiences in 1987, right. feels like. So yes, while well, she's still the villain, I do think there are. We kind of share that title in, this yeah. time. That's true. That's yeah. And there's compassion to be found yeah. for yeah. Alex. And Josh, talk to me a little bit about Dan and the journey he gets to go on this time around. Um, and also, you two bonding and sort of developing that chemistry, that rapport on set. Well, I mean, to what you just said, there's a, there's a, our story takes a long time and is very keen to tell the story of consequences mm -hmm. for Dan, right? And while we get in and have sympathy and empathy for the journey that Alex is going on and, and really make sure that we try to present in the story, like, why this woman is and who this woman is beyond just the villain. We also make Dan be accountable to the choices that he makes and the sequence of choices that he makes. He doesn't just step out on his wife, step out on his family, violate his oath of office. He makes a series of questionable decisions mm -hmm. and then our story jumps in time between two times so you actually see what the long-term consequences are mm -hmm. for his wife, for his daughter, for himself. And that was, for me, on the dance side, that was the most interesting part, was to, to show, you know, you make, it's like the, the butterfly effect, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you make this decision, clearly a bad decision. If you would have made a good decision after that bad decision, we wouldn't have had a story to tell. But this ripples out through time. And then, you know, to the relationship part, you and I had met, but briefly, before we got into all this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there was actually a long time between knowing we were doing this job and starting this job that allowed us the opportunity to dive in and get into all these conversations. Like we have a extremely long text chain from the very beginning mm -hmm. talking about like how it was that we wanted to approach these two characters in this story in 2023. So that was really important to me and, and you know, it's embarrassing to say this in front of you, Please easier to compliment yourself. you when you're not here. I'll look away. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. She's awesome. Oh my and it was an amazing experience working. No, 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 you can't. Away. 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 It was an amazing experience to work with her and to be able to find that place of you know, trust and vulnerability because we go into some pretty dark places. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm very, very thankful that I had a partner in this who was willing to be there in that space and trust me in that space and I could trust her in that space. And yeah. I don't think we would have been able to do that show without that. Okay, you can come right. back. You can come back. He just what said, basically he can't stand you. I said you are and a diva <laughs> and I'm never doing much. that again. Okay. Not happening. Yeah. Season two, and eh, yeah. no. Can't do uh, it. <laughs> can't do it. Um, you mentioned trust and vulnerability and look, heavy on the attraction. We get a lot of sexy scenes here, but we all know at this point that those scenes aren't what they look like by the time we watch them. So what was it like filming the sexier scenes? How did the intimacy coordinator help you all sort of navigate that? Can, can I joke, I, I would actually, I mean, those scenes sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a there's an additional layer, like those scenes kind of are what they are and there's a bit of yeah. a, it, it's a bit of a, of a dance really, mm -hmm. right? And you agree on what they are and where they are in the story. Yeah. I was actually, there's some psychologically and physically mm -hmm. uh, problematic interactions mm -hmm. between these two mm -hmm. characters. And that's really the place that I'm talking about. Is right, like, right. you know, 
there is some stuff that we do on this that yeah. I definitely went home at night feeling not great about myself as a man. Mm. And to have somebody willing to trust me in those spaces, right, yeah. is, it's a it's a lot to ask. I mean, you're yeah. putting yourself in a physically vulnerable space with somebody who's a lot larger than you mm -hmm. and really diving into these scenes that are terrible, terrible moments in a person's life. Yeah. The intimacy coordinate, like, I, intimacy coordinators are great. We had a very good one yeah, on this one. Um, but, it is, you know, we've done a lot of those. So that's just about building our rapport. But mm -hmm. there's some other stuff that we do that, you know, makes me really uncomfortable. Like, sex does not make yeah. me uncomfortable as a man. There's yeah. some other stuff that we do that, it, you know, it just, it's tough to go home to your wife and kid after playing some of these Absolutely. scenes and having somebody to, like, create a safe space around that is very important. That's, so is that, re to, because I really appreciate that answer, navigating that sort of really psychological complexity together, was that between the two of you? Was that also something where people came in um, whether it was director, showrunner, yeah. EP, to help sort of navigate those spaces. Yeah, and I agree with everything Josh said. Like yeah. the intimacy, <laughs> no, not everything, 80%. The keep them intimacy coordinator stuff, like we've both done so much of this in mm -hmm. our careers, like we know how to keep that light and yeah. embrace the ridiculousness of what our job <laughs> entails. But the physical stuff, like the violent stuff, mm -hmm. was not. It, there was nothing fun about that. Your body doesn't really know the difference. Yeah. If somebody's like throwing you on around, not in a fun way, like in a violent <laughs> way, uh, it was upsetting. And yeah, I mean, there's examples of jobs you have to do with co-stars that you have to kind of grin and bear it even if you don't get along or you're not on the same page. I can't imagine doing this one mm -hmm. under those circumstances. In that, yeah, that, totally that would have been right. real bad. Right, absolutely. Um, you mentioned bringing that home, right, to your wife, to your child. Uh, you also said while promoting this that had you met Jody five years ago, it would have been a different situation. How did you know that she was the one? It was the right time. You're ready to get married. I didn't know we were married. That, the first thing that popped into my mind was not marriage. Okay. <laughs> that was not the first place Fair. that my mind went. Not usually with men, yeah. though. Let's be so I'm just going to be honest. Like, when I first saw her, I didn't think, we're going to have a child and get married. <laughs> I'm ready to procreate. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't actually know what the answer... I mean, I know what the first thing was. It was like, oh, my God, who is that woman? But yes. um, then you get to know somebody, and it just mm -hmm. becomes the thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we played the little dance in the beginning where we were like... It's casual, it's casual. We're just going to spend every moment of every day right. with each other. But it's ca it's cool, yeah. but casual, it's casual, it's casual. And then it wasn't, and then here we are. It's, yeah. Yeah. Dan doesn't always make the right decisions, but he definitely is a good girl dad. Yes. Do you feel that you brought any of that energy to, to the role? Yeah, I think it's an amazing thing. Like, I look back now on characters that I've played who were parents, mm -hmm. and I laugh at that actor trying to play that role. <laughs> the same thing, even yeah. just like how you hold a baby. Just like. billion, or it's like greet them when they come home, like, yeah. hello child, <laughs> how are you? Yeah, I Welcome know. to your home that you live yeah, in with me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that has definitely changed the dynamic. Uh, yeah. Just it just lives in your body differently. Okay, got it. And lastly, Lizzie, twentieth anniversary of Mean Girls approaching. Uh, what would fans be most surprised to know about the making of that hit that you so clearly want to talk about? I mean, I don't know if there's anything left to be surprised yeah. by. It's been like dissected within an inch. We can't of it. stop dissecting. I know it. it's wild that that is twenty years old. That 20, makes yeah. me feel um, deeply. <laughs> sad. It's, a, it's, it's impossible. I mean, it's amazing, but like 20 years, yeah. 20 years ago, I was just an infant. You're a wee little thing. I know. Yeah. Yeah, apparently not. Look at you now. Uh, fatally attracting folks. Fatally attracted. Well, 20 years old. <laughs> 20 years later. Congratulations on all of the projects, but in all seriousness, this one also. Thank really you. Really great Thank to you. talk with you. Both. You too.